Hi, I'm Euclidean Vision. Welcome to Who Will Answer Recall, a series looking at members of the Overwatch cast most likely to rejoin Overwatch in the near future, speculating on their attitudes and responses to Recall, and the possible routes forward for them to take in the story that those responses can create. Today, especially regarding the imminent cinematic, we'll be focusing particularly on the future of everyone's favourite cyber cowboy, Jesse McCree. So what do we know about Jesse McCree? He's an ex-member of the Deadlock Rebels, which suggests he had a, uh, a troubled youth and has been on the wrong side of the law several times. Could this, uh, this troubled youth have been influenced by the Omnic Crisis? He's old enough for that to have been the case? Maybe. Moving on from that, he was recruited into Blackwatch via Gabriel Reyes, who maybe obviously saw something in the young McCree. He was actually the audience's first-person perspective, really, on the Retribution event, which led to sort of the start of his character growth as we've seen it. Now, post the fall of Overwatch, he's on the run as an ex-Blackwatch agent. He seems to be well-known in the world, and he's not really trying to fight the situation. He's worth like 60 million, 60 million dollars, and he's not speaking out against it. He's just staying on the run. He's still trying to do what he's doing despite it. As a freelance bounty hunter, he's still trying to dispense justice because it isn't going to dispense itself. It shows sort of despite his uh, position, he's still actively fighting for what he believes is right and wants to continue a sort of duty to the world, as it were. He's lost his arm since Overwatch disbanded. Is this going to build into a conflict now? Is it part of a prior conflict or is it just something separate and even just like an innocuous detail? And sure, we've also seen he regularly acts independent of the greater powers in the world, but often for the best interests. Is this a running theme? Is this something we'll see from him again? Is this sort of how his character is going to act going forward? I'm sure. So who has he got links to in the Overwatch universe? There's obviously Gabriel Reyes, and this is probably one of the most important connections McCree has. He's almost his mentor or like father figure. Whoever's in the, as I said, saw something in McCree despite the situation. They also seem to have, or at least to, to have had, especially during Retribution, they had sort of a mutual respect for each other. Despite their attitudes towards each other, they were very easily able to challenge each other in their positions, and it shows that they did actually value what each other had to say. But... Has this been damaged by the very ideological conflict that arose from Retribution? Yes, seemingly. There's plenty for them to resolve through that conflict, and it serves to help us expand on McCree's story, Reyes's story, and his values, but that also helps influence, say, like, uh, the conflict between Reyes and Soldier 76. Using McCree to expand on Reyes initially allows for when Reyes and Jack Morrison's conflict comes into prominence for Reyes to be at least be more understood as what he is as the Reaper, for instance. So there's plenty to come from that storyline. Are there any other characters, especially like within Blackwatch, because that was sort of McCree's sort of most distinctive uh, era of his life that we know of. This was, there was Moira, <laughs> uh, they definitely didn't get on all that well, she was condescending as well to him, <laughs> uh, and sort of proved that at that point he was a bit young and reckless and a bit stupid and hopefully the retribution event has led into him maturing and becoming a bit wiser in th at this point in time but he always seemed to have a bit of a strong intuition he always thought hiring moira was a mistake which means he may have figured out sort of what she was about way earlier than anyone else did his relationship with genji is kind of interesting he often tried to be as sympathetic as he could towards genji tried it didn't always work and they often ended up being kind of confrontational in their prior days seemingly but genji now having come to terms much more with who and what he is he might look fondly on mccree for what he's done there's also the, the tiny thing with the blackwatch pilot fio that mccree owed her money just to sort of again i sort of reaffirm that at that point in time he was still this young reckless bit of a stupid young dude so anyone more particularly within the overwatch organization most of his interactions with them are, as far as we've seen, quite amicable, like respectful. There's only a few like notable ones. Uh, Soldier 76, uh, Jack Morrison <laughs> shows at least through some voice line interactions, some kind of distaste for McCree, but like it doesn't seem to be anything malicious. It's more along the lines of maybe Jack Morrison seeing something again of himself in McCree, just as Reyes did, maybe like different sides of the coin both manifesting in McCree. 
or he just hates the dripping cliche, maybe because he's kind of one himself as well. Or is it showing the like lawful good, chaotic good divide and how they uh, view each other? There's also Anna, who's apparently the the woman who really taught him how to shoot. She considers him a bit of a charmer, and you know, suggests them they those two might be a bit closer than we ever thought before. You know, and also that's sort of reaffirmed with Farah, who apparently McCree played with when she was a child. And he was obviously a little bit older. They again might be closer than we thought. He's like a big brother to her or something a bit more. Oh, is, Ma is, Ma is McCree the reason that Anna and Sam split up? McCree, you dog. Anna, you do the pair of you. Get out of here. Moving on. <laughs> Talon? Okay, how do we feel about Talon? How do Talon feel about McCree? Do we know anything? Yes, at least we've got interactions that Doomfist would try to recruit McCree into Talon. He's at least denied that one straight out. Um, or at least made, made a point that it was a bit of a ludicrous offer. Is there something more to come from that? Maybe, we can see. Widowmaker, he, again, as I've, I've mentioned with Tracer, that she likely knows, has figured out in the present who Widowmaker is. If McCree were to come into contact with her, I can see him figuring out. Oh, that's Amelie de Croix, but she's blue and tried to kill me. Oh no, <laughs> he was some very, he was much closer with Gerard Lacroix than most of the other characters we've seen, so he could, there could be a, a, an avenue into exploring that there for both of their characters. Uh, Sombra, we know, was investigating McCree in the Reflections comic. Was she doing it about her, out of her own volition? Was it ordered by Talon? What are the reasonings for that? I will discuss that in a bit. But yeah, there's there's plenty to come out of that storyline. Theoretically, it's only a tiny bit of evidence, but if you use that as a means to lay a groundwork going forward, it can offer loads of opportunities. There's also Maximilian, who we know from Retribution that McCree will at least know of, and know of the importance of. He's mentioned once by Reyes during the event about being someone important who could take over following Antonio's death after the alley. But then at the end of Retribution, Maximilian is mentioned alongside Akande Ogundimu as being someone who's progressed up the ranks of talent. So it doesn't mean there's anything important, it just means if Maximilian were to turn up, someone like McCree will have much more of a clue as to who or what he is than someone else. Does he know anything about Sanjay? That's the one that I think he has no clue on. If, say, Sanjay or Maximilian were to come into contact with McCree at some point, Sanjay, he'd have no clue about who he was and what his motives or connections were, whereas compared to Maximilian, he would. So that changes his reaction, interaction with them going forward. And thinking about going forward, what does he have to do? What does McCree have to do, or what is he going to do, and what does he actually want to do? What are his actual personal goals and motivations? In terms of just plot points in terms of things he has to do or wants to do. Uh, helping Overwatch or returning to Overwatch is definitely a viable way forward for McCree. It, it fits in with his ideology of dispensing justice and helping sort out the world. He most likely sees that Overwatch is a desirable thing to return to, most likely. Could he try to work against Talon, whether through Overwatch, whether independently, or could he do it from within Talon? Again, as he's the kind of character to go to the places that not everyone else would like to go and work from the side that people don't want to be working on. Could he infiltrate Talon to learn about their goals and motives, try to deter them from within? Or could he go there for more personal reasons to try and look into the nature of Rhea's Reaper, what he is? try and stop him or reevaluate their position on each other. I'll discuss that very shortly. Those are all sort of quite major direct ideas. If he's playing a more removed role within the overall plot, could he be after some sort of other slightly more detached goal that leads into that later on, like, say, the power cores, the one of which he comes across in the Train Hopper comic, and makes note that Talon are after these things, We've also seen one of these things turn up in the infiltration short handed to Katia Volskaya. Are they important? Are they a thing? We've maybe seen that a similar technology is used in the mecha mechs, maybe? Is it anything going forward? Unsure. Could it be a smaller 
uh, subplot that leads back into the overall plot later on, and McCree is our way to explore that. It could be. What do I think are his more like personal actual goals? Um, I think this is actually quite easy to determine and quite centralised. It's to come to terms with Reyes's decisions back at Retribution and during the falling out of Overwatch, how they impact his own methods of dispensing justice. Maybe he wants to redeem Reyes, or maybe even finally put an end to the Reaper so that McCree himself can move on and feel rid of like responsibility for what has happened to the world due to their actions, etc. etc. So looking into his overall like character arc and the themes that it's going to explore, I think it's this one's quite again very simple. It's about the application of justice and personal responsibility. You're gonna carry that weight, Cal. As with most Overwatch Dilemma, this is about ends versus means, ethical morality, pragmatism and consequentialism versus idealism, what you want to see for the world and making it so, deontology, the manner in which you do what you do, and virtue ethics, who does what they do and what does that say about what they've done. Uh, th th that's really, really, really brief. I'm, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not a philosopher or anything if I'm wrong about those. <laughs> but hopefully you understand the, um, the implications of that, obviously, pragmatism and consequentialism being acting in the most logical, thought-out way. Um, not caring about means, it's more about the end result when you follow that sort of uh, moral philosophy. So how do I think we'll sort of see this expressed? Uh, I think through McCree we're going to see a further parallel to an expansion on Reyes's dilemma and retribution, so sort of the struggle with the responsibility of taking a life to enforce peace and law, which McCree can provide like further commentary on compared to Reyes's initial dilemma that sort of sets the groundwork for this by that same interaction where Reyes killed Antonio to do what he needed to do is McCree going to be put in the situation where he could have to kill Reyes in order to fulfill the same outcome? And what is McCree's response to that? Could he like prove a point against Reyes's philosophy by sparing the Reaper? Or could he acknowledge the worth of what Reyes has said and his responsibility by finally killing him? Doing e like either of these should help McCree realise the weight that Reyes placed upon his own shoulders in that incident. Or we could even see like a middle ground where, whereby Reyes convinces McCree to do it for the greater good. He wants him to kill off the Reaper, but that can end up producing quite a few again different reactions in McCree, especially if he does it could. That could lead to McCree, say, taking up the mantle of the Reaper, because in doing, in like agreeing to Reyes's philosophy, he might actually see the value of the Reaper as an entity in world. He might accept that as the best form by which to apply justice. Unsure, or he wanders off into the sunset, his past put to rest, his wrongs righted, truly alive and free never to be seen again. Bang. Jesus, that one makes me sad, man. <laughs> and I think that's actually kind of a really viable way to end his storyline. A really, like, satisfying conclusion. It's sad. It, like, uh, it hurts to think about. Goes and kills his mentor and believes he's done everything that he needs to do. Confirms that he's got a valid place in the world and then he's done what he needs to do. He can't, he can't stay around and do anything more. <laughs> it's hurt him that much that he just has to disappear. <laughs> All of this accentuated by the fact that he likely cares for this guy. It's not just an ideological conflict. It's a personal struggle for McCree to come to terms with the idea of killing Reyes in accordance with or in spite of his moral stance on the issue. As this is like endgame territory, I can see this occurring maybe like more than once across the time span of the narrative, with McCree's first response signalling the kind of personal growth you'll have to make in order to make the ultimate decision and what the ultimate choice will be. And this conflict can theoretically occur no matter where McCree falls faction-wise. I feel he's got potential to be part of either faction or none at all, and still achieve his personal goals and complete his character arc at large. No faction at all may even fit his character more naturally, that's to be seen going forward. Regarding Overwatch then, why would he return to Overwatch and what would he want to do there? Uh, he could return just for the fact that he keeps bumping into Talon, <laughs> and he either wants to make his own life easier, or he wants to stop them. That is a very logical outcome for McCree to have. He could see that Overwatch is needed, or maybe needs him, 
and obviously he could return much more in line with my initial idea about his overall character arc. He could return to Overwatch to use them for, to facilitate his intentions regarding Reyes, wanting to learn his intentions, understand their relationship, redeem him, change his mind, yada yada. And he, yeah, he would feel that Overwatch might be the best way to do that. He could obviously go back to Overwatch and be like, I'm going to do you guys a favour, and I'm going to go do my own thing, whether that's infiltrate Talon, to give them information about Talon, yada yada. But I think he'd at least come back to Overwatch to announce that to them. And if he does join Overwatch, as I've discussed in another video, there's a few sort of ideological conflicts he will have to sort of put, uh, sort of put his thoughts into. It's the stance on Omnics, the stance on killing, and the stance of the sort of secrecy or publicity of the Overwatch organisation. Those three things are really important for the for Overwatch as an organisation to figure out what it is going forward, and each member's input into that will determine what it is and how it does what it does. McCree's view on Omnics not very well defined. We don't really know. I don't think we've had any particular thoughts from him about Omnix as a whole. I have a feeling there's not even any interactions between him and an Omnic to actually make a commentary on. So at this point, that's one that can be explored. His feelings on Omnix will be something to be determined. He's evidently quite cool with cyberization, so I have a feeling he may be uh, just pretty much ambivalent to Omnix. He's like, yeah, yeah, you, your things, cool. If you if you if you're a nice if you're a nice Omnic to me, I'm going to treat you well. So, but that yeah, that again remains to be seen. His views on killing, <laughs> that again, that's part of a huge ideological conflict of his. We've sort of seen in Train Hopper that he's he's still happy to kill, especially humans. He's happy to do so. He's probably again, he's probably going to treat Omnix the exact same. But they would have to be armed or at least able to defend themselves, or causing harm to others directly. The main point about retribution to McCree was him viewing the execution style of killing Antonio as what was the real thing that was morally wrong with what happened. So, he's going to be one of the few on the side within Overwatch, I feel, who's like, yeah, I'll kill people. I think we may have to to do what we have to do, whereas quite a few others will be against that sort of thing. Um, but he's going to make them realise sort of the reality of the situation then. So, uh, and his thoughts on secrecy and publicity, quite a few different ones I think can be garnered out of him, whereas some characters are a bit more obvious about their stance on this. Uh, if he doesn't join them at all, I imagine he respects their like uh, the bold stance of coming out as Overwatch, even if it's not like announced so heavily, but he might also feel that it's a bit too aspirational, a bit misguided, I mean, stops them being able to really do what they want to do, who knows. If he does rejoin, I think that he could either put himself forward as the sole Blackwatch member, or he could be the one who actually speaks out against it being an idea altogether, in that Overwatch has to be accountable for what it is. It has to follow its own rules in order to be philosophically or thematically what it's trying to be. If they don't adhere to their own rules, then how actually reliable are they as what they are trying to be? McCree might put forward the point that, no, 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 if we have a Blackwatch unit, then we can't earn trust properly. We can never actually affirm the trust and responsibility that we want and need to do what we want to do. Even if he doesn't join, he could still turn up and make that point that, like, you guys need to be careful about how you do what you do. If you don't follow your own rules, if you can't hold yourselves accountable, no one's going to trust you and no one's going to... Then what good are you? You're not really embodying anything genuinely benevolent, are you? Think about it, guys. So I think, yeah, he's going to be actually really useful in presenting some of these more harsh realities to Overwatch as a whole. If he were to go and join Talon, maybe? Could he join through Reaper? Like, if they end up accessing each other sometime soon in the story? If he does so, will it be to confirm their actions, act against them, change them from within, spy for Overwatch? Who knows? It's, I think it's, again, most likely he's joining purely to resolve his conflict with Reyes, if this were to be the case. It obviously doesn't have to be. There could be a slightly weirder uh, avenue into this. Like, could he be seemingly or actually convinced to join? Or if he, could he join in order to see if the argument made that's being made to try and convince him is true? That could be kind of interesting going forward, and it'd be a nice cliffhanger to leave us on if it seems that he's been actually convinced, but we learn as we go forward that he's exploring it or using it just for his own ends. 
uh, in this iteration, like his, I think his character arc would still be the same, still revolve around the same conflict with Reyes, etc. But he might go down a more sinister route before redeeming himself somehow, instead of the opposite <laughs> that I've outlined so far, of trying to be the best person that he can, and maybe realising that he can't actually achieve that. So, I don't mean there are any other possible storylines with him. There's obviously like the little side plot with the Deadlock gang. Is that more than a side plot? Is it just a lead in to the grander conflict overall? Unsure. Uh, could he go on a bounty hunt for Junkrat and Roadhog? Maybe, if the pacing of Overwatch was a bit faster. Doing smaller stories like that would be way more viable. For, for instance, could he go to see Farah? Could he go to pick her up and be like, yo girl, come join Overwatch, man. Or, I mean, I'm not going, but you totally should. Like, for your own sake, go join Overwatch. <laughs> I think that'd be really cool. It'd be really nice, like, just a little character interaction to see see there. Could there be anything with Sombra? All right, okay, a few ideas for Sombra. She's, she's either investigating the Kree for Talon or for her own ends. And what does that, uh, like, what does that mean? The pair of them seem to be, like, really... There seem to be really, really strong parallels between them, both from their backgrounds and their sort of the manner in which they do what they do. They're both very like lone wolf kind of characters in that they're associated to these larger organizations, but they often work on the outskirts of them, largely to, especially in Sombra's case, more for their own intentions. Uh, McCree obviously uses his own intentions that, in order to act upon the organization's intentions, etc. But they're, they're two very similar characters and they seem to have the strongest ability to while being associated with the grander conflict to work within it from outside of the organizations involved. God, that was a hard sentence. So how could they do this? Could they could she just be investigating him to try and spy on him, learn about learn about his connection to Reyes or learn about his connection to Overwatch? In if so, how could she go about that? Is is there going to be sort of like a cat and mouse style thing going on where McCree chases Sombra, Sombra chases McCree? Or could they end up working together if they find that their goals align despite who they're aligned with? Could they even... Yeah, okay, you're gonna, you guys are going to hate me for this one. Could they enter into a relationship? Yes, I know I'm shipping. I know, but hold on, hold on. You'll see why I'm doing this. I'm doing it to make a storyline. <laughs> Especially for Sombra's case. It does also help McCree in giving him something like this. We know that she has no personal attachments in the world. Everything she does is logical. She creates conflict for everyone. Where's hers? If we give her an emotional attachment to essentially her parallel on the opposite side of the conflict, what does that actually do for her and McCree's storylines? I think there's a few ways you can look at this. It could obviously be something that occurs if they end up working together, but that maybe ends up detrimenting <laughs> their efforts going forward. So if she's been investigating him, could she have done the classic fell in love with the person you were spying on thing? She, her, she as Olivia Colomar, gets into a relationship with Jesse McCree and actually falls for him. Actually, actually likes this guy and he likes her in return. And then it, when it's revealed who Sombra is to McCree, what kind of emotional fallout that's going to cause? For the both of them, especially if they both actually like each other. And that enhances their dynamic involving Overwatch and Talon. That it becomes more than just a logical, oh, you are fighting for this reason, I am fighting for this reason, therefore we disagree. There can actually be an emotional conflict in there of, so there's something else to interfere with their logical goals. Again, especially Sombra's. But I think it would work really well in McCree's case to give him a further actual like emotional attachment because his connection with Reyes, while somewhat emotional, is rooted largely in an ideological conflict, whereas with Sombra he can have a smaller ideological conflict that is actually an emotional conflict for the pair of them. So I'm sure that you all hate that I just shipped, and I agree, I'm really sorry. Hopefully you like where I took it, that it can actually do something for us going forward. I want to see them break up. I'm not saying that they should stay together or we should, uh, like, I'm not shipping to see people bang in Overwatch. You know that there's plenty of places you can go to see that. We don't need it in the actual story and I don't really want it there. I'd rather use something like that to make a storyline going forward. So where do I see this ultimately going? What's and How do I see this ultimately concluding? I think ultimately this will result in some form of positive outcome. 
with McCree either able to like eventually redeem Reyes or come to terms with the responsibility people like him carry, despite the actions that allow him to realise this. What do I see for the cinematic? Uh, I reckon it's going to be called Deadlock, for obvious reasons and maybe not so immediately obvious ones. I imagine the outcome of the short will leave McCree in some kind of deadlock, stuck between a rock and a hard place, if you will. I imagine we'll get shown it through like history with the deadlock gang, Reyes pulling him out of it into Blackwatch, something to do with the retribution fallout, Overwatch disbanding, maybe him losing his arm if it's got importance to this part of the narrative somehow, which can like, lead into the present conflict with McCree and the reformed deadlock gang at Route 66, whatever that's about, whether it continues the power core plot storyline, who knows, is it going to be a prominent Deadlock member that is bringing this about, or is it going to be maybe their contact within Talon? I kind of think it's going to be the contact within Talon. I don't really see Deadlock Gang being a thing from here. It was largely just, again, good background detail from McCree, similar to Los Muertos, in that it has helped facilitate story progression and provide us, provide us with just background for a playable hero, too, if you count Soldier. But, you know, they're not really considered a faction. They likely don't have to be in any in any stretch. Like the same goes for the Deadlock Gang. There's little need introducing another prominent group into the world when our focal, more understood, more viable ones haven't actually developed all that much. And they kind of don't need competition from a group with such little clout. If they're going to have competition, you know, if a Watch and Talon need another group in there, the Junkers, for example, are way more understood and viable as an actual group to bring into being of any importance compared to something like the Deadlock. So I feel that it's most likely to be their talent contact that is the main antagonist for this short in the present. I think it's most likely to be Reaper, I think that would make the most sense for their conflict going forward. It could obviously be Sombra if we're going to go into the myriad of different ways that they can end up working together or not or who knows. But if it's to introduce a new character, I think it's most likely to be Sanjay or Maximilian. For those of you who don't think Max or Sanjay can be heroes, they could still be the ones to have dealt with the Deadlock Gang and maybe act as just sort of a, a plot antagonist from McCree in this short. Not actually fight him, but maybe do what they've done to act against McCree and maybe be the road into him accessing Talon or not. But o overall, Reaper would obviously be best so that we can progress their central character conflict into the modern day. So I think, yeah, if he is to join Talon, I think Reaper's one of the clearest ways forward. If he's pushed to rejoin Overwatch because of what happens in the cinematic, I think it could be some of the other ones, maybe some of the newer characters like Maximilian or Sanjay. Or if it's or if he ends up sort of pursuing more his own goals in his own way, I think that we'll see him come into contact with Sombra. So, that's everything I can think of regarding the future of McCree. <laughs> I hope this has sparked some interesting ideas, giving you some hope for the Overwatch story going forward. I'm really looking forward to what the new cinematic has to offer us, and I'll be doing a live reaction and review when it comes out on, hopefully, Friday the 2nd? If they announce or do anything else story-related, I'll provide my response to that too. So, it's been a pleasure, thank you for watching, I hope to see you again around Friday. I've been Euclidean Vision. Please subscribe to the channel if you think I'm not talking up my ass. Take care of yourselves, and always remember, you're not good, you're not bad, but you sure as hell ain't ugly.